Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. Did you know you could be listening to this this week's episode on our new Caffeine for the Soul app? Go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, download the app, enjoy today's episode and hundreds of past episodes and other free programs, all at the Caffeine for the Soul app. This is, I was going to say possibly, but this is actually definitely the first time I've done a podcast on a dare. And, and the dare was just because we wanted to see how many times I could say the word anthropomorphization without getting it wrong. And uh, you won't know. Well, I'll probably tell you at the end if we had to go back and edit any of them. But, but the phrase came from and the dare came from uh, a, a, a client and friend named Cindy Yee. And, and, and she, she brought it up in the context of how we, we tend to make things up about people and assume they're true. And if you're not familiar with anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism is generally speaking when we attribute human traits and emotions and motivations and intentions and thoughts and feelings to non-human or even inanimate entities or objects. So it, it's, it, you probably do it with your dog or your cat. So you, 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 you assume, oh, oh, she's sad. Oh, oh, like there's, there's I don't know. I don't know if you've ever done this, but my, my, yesterday during the football, my, one of my dogs was, was, was wiggling his paws. And, and uh, it reminded me of an old New Yorker car- cartoon where somebody's dog is doing that. And the, and the owner goes, oh, look, he, 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 must be, he must be chasing rabbits in his dreams. And and then you you see a shot inside the dog's mind, and he's actually seated in a concert hall playing the piano, and that's why his paws are moving like that. But but it's something that we just do. We we attribute, project our own experience, our own thoughts and feelings and motives and traits and emotions and intentions to things that don't necessarily have them. But we do that with humans as well. We attribute our thoughts, feelings, and motives, what we would be thinking if we were in their shoes, what we would be feeling if we were in their shoes, what our motives would be if we behaved the way they're behaving. And think that it must be true. Now, if if you can misanthropomorphize your dog and and assume that you know what's going on inside your dog's brain, it, it's even easier with humans because we know that they do have thoughts and feelings and motives. But the problem is when we project our own thoughts, feelings, and motives onto others, that creates a real block in our ability to see them as they are. We get stuck not being able to see them as they are because we're seeing them as we are or as we imagine we would be. Now, this can work for us or against us. It can work against us because often we, we will, if, if we're nice people, we assume that everybody else's motives are pure too. And you've probably had a situation like that where you, you thought somebody was just behaving in a nice way and it turned out that they were up to no good. And, and you may have had it the other way where you assumed somebody was up to no good because the only reason you would do that is if you were up to no good and actually they were completely innocent and, and clear. The way it works for us is if we notice it. Because the minute we notice we're doing it, we can stop and we can tune in and we can listen and we can ask questions and we cannot assume that because they use a word that we use, they mean the same thing by that word. That because they're doing something we've done, that they're doing it for the same reasons we did it. That because they're in a situation we've been in, they're experiencing it the same way we experienced it. And when we wake up to that mistake, we get to reconnect to the real person. We get to listen. The way 
that you would listen to a piece of music where you're not assuming you know what it's about. You're just letting it wash over you. You're letting it move you until you feel it. My mentor, Mavis Karn, has a beautiful way of, of, of talking about this kind of deep listening, that it's, it's listen until you can feel their heart underneath whatever it is that they're saying. Now, when you do that, when you are willing to take the time to clarify what somebody's saying instead of assuming they mean what you think they mean, when you take the time to listen so deeply that you can feel their soul, it's not even, it's not head to head, thought to thought, it's not even heart to heart, it's soul to soul listening. You get to meet a different person. Instead of the world being made up of people who are just like you, you start to realize, oh, it takes all kinds to make a world, and that the world is richer for there being all kinds of people in it. So, very simple noticing experiment for the week. Notice where in your life you anthropomorphize your animals, your pets, your, 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 your other objects in your world. And notice where you're doing it with other people, where you're assuming that you know what they're thinking and feeling and what their motives are, because those would be your thoughts, your feelings, and your motives. And if you notice it, I encourage you to take the time to really listen. Listen beyond the words. Listen until you can feel their heart, until you can connect with them soul to soul and see what happens. Have fun, learn heaps. Didn't have to, didn't have to redo the word once. And I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>